Okay, so again, today we're going to continue on with Chapter 6, Section 3. And we're going to take a, a closer look here at the unit circle. So let me zoom in here. Now, yesterday we just focused on these quadrant angles. So the pi over 2, which was equivalent to 90. The pi, which is equivalent to 180 degrees the three pi over two, which is equivalent to the 270. And then over here, the zero degrees and the zero radians. And this, remember, also is 360 degrees when you go a full circle or two pi if it's asking you to list it in radians. Now, by having this reference tool here, it makes finding, say, the sine of a 30 degree angle a little bit more simple. Um, what we had to do before when we were graphing these angles, we would turn them into right triangles. Now, we're going to be labeling our sides differently when we're using the unit circle because the name unit circle tells me that my radius length is always going to be one. If you recall before, the radius was always the hypotenuse and it was either two or the square root of two. Now, wherever we have our R value, it's always gonna equal one. Because if I were to draw a radius here from the center to this point here, notice the order pair is one zero, this segment has a length of one. If I were to draw it down this way, it still has a length of one, even though it's going to negative one. Or if I were to draw it diagonally, um, over here to this point, it still has a length of one. Now, if you recall from before, when we did chapter five, our right triangles look like this. When it was the 45, 45, 90, remember the sides here were one, one, root two. What's going to be different now is the hypotenuse is now going to be equal to one. So my legs are now going to be the square root of two over two because I had to rationalize that. And if you look at the triangle here, or at, I'm sorry, at the unit circle, if I were to pull a 45 degree triangle here, my theta here is 45 degrees. The right angle is here. Remember your hypotenuse here is always one so now these legs are again root two over two, root two over two. Where the unit circle comes into play is if you memorize the order pair that's associated with the 45 degree angle, this is gonna be your X value, which is one of the legs, this is your Y, because this is X, this is Y. Now, for the 30, 60, 90, prior to this chapter, 30, 60, 90, remember across from 30 was one, across from the angle 60 was root three, and this was two. Now in our unit circle, the hypotenuse is now one, the side across from the 30 is now one half, half of that, and then now this is root three over two. So the sides now have changed on my special right triangle because now my hypotenuse or my R length is one because it's a unit circle. But again, if you memorize the coordinates, then you just have to look at them. Now, over here, this is a simplified version of what you've already memorized. Remember before, sine was always y over r. But now, remember, our r value is one. So really, I don't need to show y divided by one, sine is just y. So for example, if I wanted to find the sine of 30 degrees, or in this case, we're gonna be talking radians, sine of pi over six, all I have to do is come over here, look at my order pair. Sine is the y of the order pair, so my answer is 1 half. 
if I said to do cosine of 30 degrees, I'd come over here, same order pair, but now cosine uses x, so I look at the x of the order pair, and it's going to be square root 3 over 2. You can still use your triangles and still find your reference angle, but now if you have a picture of the unit circle, you can reference that, and it simplifies your process. So again, the reciprocal to sine is cosecant, so you just put 1 over y. Cosine again is x. Secant is the reciprocal, so 1 over x. Tangent we have to work for. So let's take a look at tangent of 30. So tangent of 30, or again, it may be presented as pi over 6. Remember, tangent is y divided by x. If you come and grab the order pair for 30 degrees, the order pair is root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Remember, the first number is x, second number is y. So I'm going to be doing 1 half over square root 3 over 2. This fraction bar means division. So 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. Remember, when you divide fractions, you have to do a keep flip change or stay change change, whatever you learned in fourth grade. Um, flip it. Simplify. 1 over square root 3. Rationalize. And the answer to the tangent of 30 is going to be the square root of 3 over 3. So for tangent, you've got to work for it. Now, once we cover finding theta tomorrow, looking at the denominators of our radian measures are going to help us to find the correct angle in the correct quadrant. So again, we're still going to use our all students take calculus to figure those out. But I'm going to show you some similarities with the denominators and how they match. But today all we're going to do is I'm going to give you a degree measure or a radian measure, and I'm going to ask you to find the value of the trig function. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. I'm going to go ahead and go back here, and on this slide, I have what you look at. So sine is y. But again, you could memorize it as y over r. Just remember, r is always 1. Okay. So sine uses y, cosine uses x, tangent uses both. You have to divide the y of the ordered pair by the x, and then you just do the reciprocals. Everybody good? All right, let's so import a picture of my unit circle. So I have a nice little quick reference here on this slide. Let me go ahead and add a picture. When we weren't in the midst of a pandemic, Generally, the students, if they wanted to use the unit circle to answer their questions on the test or the quiz, we would give them a blank one and they would have to refill it out. We would never provide it to them, so it would be a matter of they had to memorize it. So you guys have the advantage that you've got open note things, so um, it sort of helps you guys out. However, if you end up... Um, encountering something like this on an SAT, they don't give you a unit circle. So you either have to redraw the triangle yourself or, you know, picture the unit circle in your head. Now, chances are you're not going to be able to use a calculator on the SAT on stuff like this. They would expect you to draw the triangles. Or, what's coming up later on, use the sine and cosine graphs, which you could also find values that way. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if we can find the values for these eight questions. So again, the first three are what you had to do in last night's homework. These, this uh, 3 pi over 2 is equivalent to 270 degrees. So it's a quadrant angle. So if you remember that sine, and if you you know just use y over r, that's fine. But now we know it's a lot simpler. All we have to do is find 3 pi over 2 on our unit circle, which is right here. And because I'm doing sine, I'm going to look at the y, and the answer to sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Let me go back here. That 
bigger. So this answer, I looked at the y, and the answer is negative 1. Cosine, I'm going to look at x of that order pair. So just for reference here, the order pair is 0, negative 1. So the answer, if I try to find cosine, is just going to be 0. How do you know to look at the x or the y? Like what? Back. Now let's do tangent. So tangent, remember, is y divided by x. So my y is negative 1. My x is 0. Remember when the 0 is in the denominator? This one is undefined. Next, we're going to do 7 pi over 4. Now, if they give you an angle measure, either in degrees or radians, that's not on the unit circle, it's not in between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi, then that's when you have to find the coterminal. You've got to add and subtract 2 pi or add and subtract 360. This one is on the unit circle. If I go ahead and zoom in here, I can see that 2 pi is in quadrant 4, or I'm sorry, 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 4. And again, it's asking me to do cosine. Cosine looks at x. So my answer is just going to be square root 2 over 2. Come here. So I looked at the x, and it's the square root of 2 over 2. Same angle. And again, the order pair was negative root 2 over 2, because sine uses y. So negative root 2 over 2. Now this next one, negative 5 pi over 3, this one's not on my unit circle. The unit circle does not have negative angles. So what I need to do is find a coterminal angle. And the way that I will do that is I'm going to add 360. And in radians, remember, 360 is 2 pi. So I'm going to add 2 pi to negative 5 pi over 3. I need to find a common denominator. It's going to be 3. So I'm going to be adding 6 pi over 3. And I end up with pi over 3. Making my reference angle here going to be 60 degrees. So I'm going to find pi over 3 on my unit circle. I'm doing tangent. So remember, I have to divide. So let's go up and get the order pair for pi over 3. It's right here. 1 half comma root 3 over 2. I'm going to just do the division right here. So the question was to do tangent. So tangent of negative 5 pi over 3 is the same as doing pi over 3 because that's my reference angle. Tangent is y divided by x. So I'm doing root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. So again, I'm going to write it long ways here so I can do my keep flip change. Root 3 over 2, change the 1 half to its reciprocal. I'm going to simplify, make these 2's 1's. And my final answer is root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. So the tangent of negative 5 pi over 3, which is also equivalent to pi over 3, is the square root of 3. So if your angle that's given to you is not on the unit circle, you're going to get it to an uh, angle that's on the unit circle by adding and subtracting. If it's in degrees, you add and subtract 360. If it's in radians, you're going to add and subtract 2 pi. Let's try another one. The next one for number 7 is on the unit circle. It's 2 pi over 3. So let's go ahead and find 2 pi over 3 on the unit circle. 2 pi over 3 is located right here. And again, I wanted cosine for number 7. Cosine takes the x, so the answer is negative 1 half. So I'll come down here. Cosine of 2 pi over 3, look at x, negative half. The last one, cosine again. I'm going to find 4 pi over 3 on the unit circle. Again, cosine is going to look at the x. Let's go find 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 is located right here. You get the x. 
and it's negative one half. Now, let's say I give it to you in degrees. Now, I know this whole chapter is supposed to be in radians. In the web assigned tonight, you are going to get some questions where it may say find cosine of 390 degrees. What you're going to do is you're going to take the 390. 390 is not on my unit circle because my unit circle only goes to 360. So I have to subtract. I get 30 degrees. So then what I'm going to do is find 30 degrees on my unit circle. And then I'm going to look at the X of it. So my 30 degree order pair is going to be root 3 over 2. So again, if the web assign gives it to you in degrees, just add and subtract 360. If it gives you the measure in radians, add and subtract 2 pi until you get something on the unit circle. Pretty good. Now we're going to do calculator, which is not on the unit circle. So this is where we use our calculator. So if you have your calculator, take it out. Make sure it's in radians. Now, to change it, you're either going to, if you have the graphing calculator, you hit the mode button. You go to that line where it has degrees and radians. Highlight the word radian, hit enter, and then hit the blue button and quit. If you have a scientific, look for a button that probably says DRG, or sometimes it's setup, or menu, things like that. The way that you can check it is do tangent of 45. If you're in radians, you're no longer getting 1. You're going to get 1.6 something. So if you um, do tangent 45, you should, and you're in radians, you should be getting, I'll tell you, I'll write it on the top here, if you do tangent of 45 now and you're in radians, you should be getting 1.61977, something to that effect. If you're in degrees still, you're going to get a 1 for your answer. So this is a quick way that you could check. Can we change the setting from just the basic calculator, not the graphing? Yes, you have to, there's a button up at the top that says DRG. Okay. Touch that, and then you see how it opens up? So just highlight the word radian, okay. and then hit enter and get out of that. Okay, all we're doing here is if it's finding, asking us to find cosine, sine, or tangent, we just hit that button, put in this degree, which is now given to us in radians, hit enter, and that's our answer. So the first one, I'm just going to do cosine, 1.85. We're going to round to four decimal places, so negative 0.2756. Now, just to show you that this does make sense, if this is my um, axis here, remember one radian is about equal to 57 degrees. So this would be one. Two radians is about 114. So 1.85 radians is gonna be somewhere here in quadrant two. Remember in quadrant two, the only trig functions that are positive are sine and cosecant. I'm doing cosine. So by my getting a negative answer, it makes sense. So this negative answer has nothing to do with the value of the angle you put in. It's the location of that radian. And it's located in quadrant two. 1.8 1 radians is in quadrant two. And the only answers that I should be expecting to get positive should be something for sine and cosecant. All the other four should give me a negative answer. Let's try the next one. Again, you're just touching the cosine button. This is like half a radian, so it's in quadrant one, so I should be getting a positive answer. When I do this on my calculator, I get 0 0.8709. Now, cotangent, there is no button. This is where we have to do the reciprocal. Remember that cotangent is equal to one over tangent, so I'm gonna do one divided by the tangent of 1.3209. Hit enter, 0 0.2552. So when it's a reciprocal, cotangent, secant, cosecant, you have to do the one divided by. When they give you the angle measure, you're putting in the number that's given. So when we get to number 12, 
We're not changing the sign here. We're entering it on, as a negative two. It's when you find theta, that's when we have to enter it in as positive. So for number 12, reciprocal of secant is cosine. So I'm gonna do one divided by cosine, negative 2.9234, hit enter, and I get negative 1.0243. Now, the reason why this is negative isn't because I entered a negative angle. Again, it's the location of the radian. If I were to graph negative 2.9 radians, it would end up over here, which is quadrant three. The only answers that are positive in quadrant three are tangent and cotangent, and I was doing secant. So that's why I could expect to get a negative answer. Next one, cosine, we've got that button. This one's a little bit less than one radian, so it's in quadrant one. So I should be getting positive 73.14. Okay, let's do the next one, cosine, negative 5.28. Notice when I do this one, I get a positive answer. Because again, if I'm graphing a negative 5.2 degree angle in radians, it's gonna go clockwise, and it's gonna end up in quadrant one. Everything is positive in quadrant one, so that's why I got a positive answer. And then the very last one, the tangent of 6.4752. This is gonna give me approximately 1.61, oh wait, sorry, wrong answer. I'm looking at tangent. 6.4752, and I get 0.1944. Yes. Can I yes. All right. Yes. Um, I don't understand how you're looking at like the decimals and saying which causes are going to be. Okay. So. Um, from the video that you guys watched when I was out. I believe in the video I talked about it. So normally one radian is located here and it's around 57 degrees. Okay. Two radians are located here. Three radians are about pi. It's right around here. Four radians would be here, five here, and then six is gonna be almost to the 360. So this is the location of the radians. So when I had like 1.85 radians, I knew that it's gonna be somewhere like right around here, and it's in quadrant two. So just have a general idea of what quadrant each of these radians should be located in. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, any other questions? We're gonna stop here. I'm gonna show you two videos um, for the unit circle. Um, Tomorrow, we're going to be learning how to find the reference angles, and then we're gonna use our all students take calculus, and then we're gonna find the missing angles. Remember, like you did in the chapter five test, each one of these are gonna have two answers. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna stop here, and then your homework for this is the 6.3b, there's only six questions, and then tomorrow, the 6.3c will cover finding theta, and it also has six questions. Then Friday we're gonna review, and you have a quiz on 6.1 and 6.3 on Monday. So let me show you these two videos. They generally helped the students in the past um, so they could see the similarities in the unit circle, because again, they had to memorize it. Um, it'll probably help you locate the angles a little bit faster if you understand maybe where the denominators are and what to look for. So let me show you these two little silly videos and then you can use the rest of the class period to work on your homework.